And the story out of Baltimore just keeps getting weirder and weirder. For those of you who are unaware or who have forgotten, it was only seven, maybe not quite even eight weeks ago that people woke up to this story out of Baltimore that this giant cargo ship had lost power and accidentally drifted, giant air quotes there, accidentally, drifted into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, a bridge named after the guy who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Very strangely, we've seen over the last few years people wanting to get rid of the Star Spangled Banner and replace it with another one. Now, most people saw the slowed down images and thought, well, yeah, I guess that kind of happens, but when we showed what it looked like to a real observer on the ground with a camera, it looks like anything other than an accident. And it didn't take the authorities very long to figure this out. Now, there's a piece of information about this story that hasn't been reported, and I'm kicking myself for not having done my due diligence and homework on this. Because had I known this, we would have been talking about this the entire time. But the way the news cycles are these days on social media, you can't really stay on one story for too long. Now, real quick, this is battlefield of the mind stuff. Sometimes the idea is staying focused and looking for and through all of the little details. The mainstream media in collusion with the government has gotten very good at hiding important stuff. That's why you have to go look at all sorts of different sources and not get distracted. In this case, with so many other things going on, I did, but wait until you hear this news. If you'd like to join us at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel where we talk about battlefield of the mind issues, it's only one U.S. dollar per month. That's it. One single dollar. That's it. Even less if you sign up for an entire year and fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked, go over there, hundreds of videos, one of which we just put up a couple days ago, going back years and years talking about all sorts of different topics that are probably a little bit too hot for regular social media, free social media. That's why we have the speed bump partnering with Vimeo, so we can take the gloves off and talk about those things. Now, real quick, before we get into it, yesterday at the end of the video, I had asked folks if they could perhaps go over to Lynn Liaz, her channel. She's got an Instagram, she's got YouTube and uh, Patreon as well, Truth Hunters. Lynn Liaz is old school. I mean old school YouTube. She's been here right from the get-go. Uh, Bible scholar, absolutely one of the most intelligent on this platform. And of course, when you speak about things rationally and intelligently, you get shadow banned and you get put down in the algorithm and she's fighting financial battles as much as the rest of us. So one thing people don't know though is that she's one heck of a dancer and she stays in great shape and has all sorts of different tips and tricks about staying in shape and there's a lot of really great variety content over there as well. So just wanted to share this and uh, those of you who have gone over there, thank you so much. The support is and very much appreciated. Now, for those of you who have been following the story of this ship, they've primarily been talking about the efforts to remove the wreckage of the bridge off of the ship so they can refloat it and move it away. But there's part of the story that when I read it, I thought it was misinformation. I thought this can't possibly be true, but it is true. The crew has been restricted and detained on the ship and have not been allowed to speak to anyone outside of their group. This is two days ago. I did my research. I couldn't believe this. Who issued the warrants? Where did the FBI get warrants to detain this Indian and Sri Lankan crew for two months those just don't to get 60 i don't how many guys there are but a couple dozen at least i think maybe 29 a couple dozen warrants were just ready to go the government immediately came out and said no investigation we're not going to uh try to prosecute anybody 
and insurance paid out with no investigation. This is amazing. What happened to the crew of the Dolly cargo ship stuck under the collapsed Baltimore Bridge? Now, I couldn't believe that when I read this, I'm like, this can't be right, but it's true. A crew of Indian and Sri Lankan men has spent the last 49 days confined to a hulking and motionless cargo vessel in Baltimore. It's bow pinned by what's left of the shattered bridge it struck. Demolition crews set off explosives Monday to push broken bridge trusses away, blah, blah, blah. The 21 crewmen, I guess it's just not quite two dozen, 21 crewmen are still aboard. They've had their phones seized, which would require a separate warrant, by investigators. And those who were on the bridge, the six, have been recovered. Some worry they'll be held personally liable for the disaster. I'm not sure that's what's going on. While some crew members are coping, morale has understandably dipped. Two union representing two unions representing the seafarers said in a statement. Apparently, they have counselors on board, people to talk to. <coughs> but my God, what do they think they're going to get at this point? If what they're saying is true, that they're there just investigating and not, well interrogating, torturing. Crew members have stayed busy, focused on the many tasks of running a large cargo vessel. They've also participated in the ongoing federal investigation into the crash and assisted with salvage operations of the collapsed bridge. To me, this is just mind-blowing that nobody is talking about this. I mean, think of all the things that have come in and out of the news in the last couple of months, and nobody has said a word, almost nobody. There's a couple small channels, but it should be front page. Why are these men being detained? If there's no evidence of anything criminal, which is what was said in the following days, that this quote-unquote just appeared to be an accident, whether they're looking into negligence or not, but that's pretty fast to get 21 warrants to detain indefinitely. Have they had a chance to speak to lawyers? Would be my question. Have any of them been given right to counsel? Now, given that they're Indian and Sri Lankan, I'm not sure how this plays or whether this counts as international waters or not. Um... But those rights do extend. I'm not, uh, I guess I should probably read up on that, but it would seem like being in the port of Baltimore, if there was some allegation of criminal activity, they would have right to counsel at least, somebody to talk to. And there's no mention of that. Now, speaking of this, this is another thing that is battlefield of the mind, that to me it's connected. U.S. State Department issues worldwide alert amid threat of violence against LGBTQ plus community. 17 May 2024, 3.19 p.m. Now wait a minute. Why would there be a worldwide alert by the U.S. State Department? I thought the U.S. was the problem. I thought we were the worst place on the planet by evidence of where are all the riots? Where did all the BLM riots take place? <coughs> where have all the protests taken place? All the anti-Israel stuff. All in the United States. UC Irvine, Columbia, all down the East Coast. All the protests are here. Allegedly, we're the worst place, so the U.S. State Department should be issuing a worldwide encouragement of people to go, go visit, to go visit elsewhere. Now, how does that tie to the, the crew of the Dolly? Well, if they're foreigners, is it, shouldn't the assumption be that, well, they're not Americans, so clearly they should be given the, the benefit of the doubt. Because Americans clearly are the problem. 
Ask anyone in the world. Ask anyone in the UN. Especially with this issue with Israel. Apparently, America is the problem. So, clearly, an Indian and Sri Lankan crew, it would be superior to any other crew, right? Vacation destinations anywhere other than the United States. I mean, wasn't it the LGBTQ community that issued their own warning against Florida? Against traveling to Florida? I mean, here's a Upworthy, which is a liberal website, did a uh, survey of all around the world of the safest places for that particular community. And the darker blue is the safest. The lighter blue and purple is less safe. And the orange and red is the worst. Which would mean places like India and Sri Lanka would be worse. So, who knows? Maybe it's the LGBT community that has ordered the Sri Lankan crew to be detained because, of course, we know that, you know, they're a problem. And I always, always have this question for folks when it comes to uh, people talking about socialism. When you look at places like South America and places especially like Venezuela, and they want to be left alone. And they want to do their own thing. And they want to be able to choose for themselves how they want to govern themselves. Why is that always such a problem? You see, we have a country, Saudi Arabia, that is a theocratic dictatorship. It's not just a dictatorship. It is an actual, and very proud of it, theocratic, family-run dictatorship where they blast the call to prayer five times a day. Where their biggest achievement in the 21st century is that they have now begrudgingly allowed some women to drive. And that's the, that's the farthest left they get. <clears throat> Why are they okay? Why do we never see protests against Saudi Arabia in this country anywhere? Not one single person do you ever see protesting against Saudi Arabia and our ally, our having alliance with them. Never once do you see it or hear it or see it talked about other than on this channel. But Venezuela, which is not a theocratic dictatorship, which has elections which the U.S. has no place to talk about. Public enemy number one? Public enemy number one. Really? How does that make any sense in any real world? So, I will leave that there. 13 and a half minutes. Have a great Friday. Remember, Lynn Liaz, L-Y-N, uh, last name L-E-A-H-Z. I'll leave you a link. Um, super great dancer. Um, very, very well schooled in uh, the Bible and word etymologies. Um, give her a like. Maybe give her some support. She's got lots of links over there. Not a hard channel to find. So it's actually down on my channel, down in the, uh, um, I believe, the supporters, friends and supporters section. So you can check her out there too. So anyway, God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.